There are several JRPGs out there with enough potential to expand, to give birth to sequels or prequels. So today I'm gonna show you 10 JRPGs I think should be their own series, pretty much becoming a franchise. So let's begin! Number 10. The Legend of Dragoon Dragoon has always been a fan favorite pick for many gamers out there. They want anything related to this PS1 classic, a remake, a remaster, a sequel, a prequel, or merely a simple modern port. I think any of those could happen if Sony really cared about this IP, considering it sold over a million copies worldwide back then. Alas, they don't seem to care, so the best we can hope for is a simple port like I mentioned. Some kind of digital re-release like they did with it on the PlayStation 3 store. I personally think the story and the universe have so much potential, enough to become its own series. A prequel explaining well the origin of the Dragoons will be cool, seeing a focus on the previous events mentioned in the game. Or how about a sequel with or without the original cast, simply another turn-based RPG with characters that can transform into badass Dragoons? Whatever happens, I just hope they don't turn it into an action RPG. Number 9. The Alliance Alive I'll never understand why a hidden gem on the 3DS got enough support for a remaster on modern consoles, but I'm happy it did. That just means it was successful enough to merit the treatment, right? Well, I think the idea of this game was phenomenal. Characters recruiting NPCs to create guilds around the world. The game was written by Yoshitaka Murayama, the creator of Suikoden, so it's no wonder we felt Suikoden's influence here, if only just a little. However, I just don't feel like that very same idea was used to its fullest. I'm not saying it was wasted potential because it worked well in the game, but it could have been much better. We could have recruited characters that could join our party just like in the Suikoden games. So if the Alliance Alive ever gets a sequel, connected to the first game or not, I hope they add that new feature. Everything else is just great, so there's no need to change anything really. Number 8. Dragon's Crown Vanillaware is a very unique company. They make standalone games and wrap things up in them quite efficiently. I mean, if they made a sequel to 13 Sentinels, what would it be called? 14 Sentinels? Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Odin Sphere is my favorite Vanillaware game, but it also ended with no hope for a sequel. They would have to make another game based on another deity. So, Thor's Sphere next? Yeah, I don't think so. Honestly, Dragon's Crown is the only one that has true potential to become its own series. First of all, because it's a game meant to be played on multiplayer, although its offline story mode is amazing by itself. And second, characters don't talk, they are silent protagonists that are customizable and interchangeable. So I don't see why we couldn't get a Dragon's Crown 2 with the same basic ideas. In this particular case, it shouldn't even be relevant if the story of the sequel is connected to the first game. I just think that making a series about a bunch of class created characters fighting in a beat em up RPG is so generic, in the good sense of the word, that a series will work wonders. After all, this is the best selling Vanillaware game in history, so why not? Number 7. Lost Dimension I know it's a big cliché, but I am a fan of the type of plot Lost Dimension has. Characters trapped somewhere trying to escape or survive or kill each other. In Lost Dimension, your main character has to decide who needs to die on the current floor in order to proceed to the next one. He is being forced by the evil madman who trapped them all in the first place in a tower. So that plot idea right there, however overused it is nowadays, is just terrific for a strategy RPG like this. I don't mean to say I want a direct sequel to Lost Dimension, just a new game, a Lost Dimension 2, this time with different characters in a similar situation. Developers could work out their creativity in so many ways. Just follow the same formula, still with similar combat mechanics. But I do hope they don't mess up the difficulty like they did with their most recent game, Monarch. 
Lost Dimension is an excellent game, so I hope it becomes its own series one day. Games like Dead End Request, Mary Skelter and Akiba Strip are a series. I mean, what the hell, man? Number 6. Scarlet Nexus I don't know why I get the feeling this one is bound to get a sequel one day, or maybe it's just me. The potential is there to even develop a brand new game unrelated to the original story-wise. Despite my complaints with the controls of the psychokinesis feature, which is the core of the game's combat, I really do believe it was a tremendous idea. It's hard to get used to so many battle mechanics, but once you do, enjoyment is all there is to it. The dual protagonist idea was well executed here, because both characters have their own team and story events for the first arc. I also believe the plot, while not as dark as other science fiction games, is still pretty intense. We need more stories like this in JRPGs, honestly. This game has already sold 1 million units worldwide, so I'm not sure what Bandai Namco is planning to do with that success. They usually go the franchise route with that, and since Scarlet Nexus already has an anime series and the game was released pretty much everywhere nowadays, my expectations are high. Number 5. Eternal Poison Okay, this is not gonna happen, it's just a wet dream I have, but I had to include it. I'm such a big fan of this game that I think the whole idea of this mysterious eternal poison could go on forever. A bunch of characters in search for it, or it being in the middle of the whole conflict. It just sounds so dark and greedy, but very appealing as well. Eternal Poison! Plus, I feel we need more gothic-style JRPGs nowadays, so any form of sequel will be awesome. This is a grid-based strategy RPG, where you play through four different main characters, each with their own team, story and missions, all in the search for the eternal poison. Events are deeply intertwined with each other, so it doesn't have any substantial roots to follow. You gotta play with them all to get the true final boss and the true ending. I mean, people are so obsessed with that stuff nowadays that a game like Eternal Poison will be very welcomed, right? Though I guess if it was very niche back in the day, it will still be today. So like I said, it's not gonna happen, I know, but a man can dream, can't he? I mean, if a game like Brigandine got a sequel 20 years later, anything can happen. Number 4. Radiata Stories I just talked about this game on my JRPGs with massive replay value video, so I'll be quick. I mentioned there that here you recruit 175 characters as playable party members. You get a bunch if you go to the human side or the other bunch if you choose the non-human side. You know me, I'm a die-hard fan of Suikoden, Fire Emblem and Chrono Cross, so I love games where you can have tons of party members. Now, Triace made this game published by Square Enix, they're still working together, now with the upcoming Star Ocean 6 release. There's a big fan base out there, so it could definitely benefit a lot from a modern remaster, even better a sequel, turn this into a series, man. I mean, Jack still continues his journey at the end, so a direct sequel in maybe another city will be awesome, or it could be in the same city of Radiata with a different cast of characters several years after the events of the first game, or a new cast in a new city, unrelated story-wise to its predecessor. Whatever it is, I'm game. I'm up for recruiting almost every NPC in town to fight by my side in an action RPG. Number 3. Eternal Sonata this hybrid RPG was so beautifully developed that it could greatly benefit from a sequel. I say hybrid because it mixes action with turns. Every character has a turn they have to wait for, but it's up to the player to move them towards the enemy and press the action buttons to damage it. One of the most unique battle systems I've seen in my life, I love it. Now, this is a game where the protagonist is pretty much Frederick Chopin himself. Yep, that famous composer from Poland. Obviously involved in a magical and fantastic world which is possibly just a dream. I thought the idea was pretty bizarre at first, but after playing the game, I fell in love with it. So if 3 Crescendo, the developers, ever decide to turn this into a series, then the next game will be awesome with a different composer. I don't know, Mozart, Beethoven, or even freaking Rachmaninoff! 
The possibilities are endless. I know the developers were pretty much absorbed by Bandai Namco Studios and have worked on some of the recent Tales games, but still, they have the IP, don't they? So yeah, I hope we get another one. Number 2. Radiant Historia I want this game to be its own series because I liked its ideas a lot. I'm not sure a direct sequel would make sense, but I'll take it if that were to be the case. I'm alright with a new story though, one with new characters and setting, and a new protagonist that holds the power of the White Chronicle, the magic book capable of altering timelines where the player can go back to a previous event or battle to do things differently and change the course of history. The game was both a critical and commercial success, but it's important to point out that it didn't sell that much, at least not compared to other Atlus's more successful titles like Megami Tensei or Persona. Atlus is owned by Sega, and if they don't think that this RPG was that profitable, we probably won't see a sequel. Yeah, they're a little bit like Sony in that regard. Headlock, the co-developers of this game, probably meant for this one to be standalone, but it has so much potential. Seeing a new character taking hold of the Chronicle to make the player invest in such awesome mechanics, I mean, come on, Atlus. Number 1. Super Mario RPG Because Squaresoft had their differences with Nintendo back in the mid-90s, we never got a true sequel to this legendary masterpiece. Instead, Nintendo jealously created a new IP and got their subsidiary Intelligent Systems, creators of Fire Emblem, to work on Paper Mario, a spiritual successor. Now, that became its own series, didn't it? And if that wasn't enough, they even went ahead and made yet another IP, Mario and Luigi, successful series as well as Paper Mario, developed by Alpha Dream, which wasn't a subsidiary of Nintendo, so they went bankrupt three years ago and we probably won't see any more Mario and Luigi games. Since Nintendo published Super Mario RPG themselves, does that mean they own the IP and not Square Enix nowadays? I'm not too sure about that, but I'd love to see a comeback of this game on modern systems. Perhaps that will show Nintendo how enthusiastic people are of this original first Mario RPG. Problem is, who will work on a brand new game so this can be a series? Square Enix? That'll mean an action RPG most likely. So if not them, then who? Maybe I'm just hoping for the impossible here, but I think Super Mario RPG should have been its own series from the start. My one and only honorable mention is Code Vein. I really want to include this game, but something tells me it'll get a sequel for sure. Looks like Bandai Namco is starting to abandon the God Eater IP to move to Code Vein. Kinda like what Square Enix did with Drakengard and then Nier. So yeah, it's very likely we'll see this 2 million seller new IP come back in the near future. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. See you next time!